I think would be a huge one with Shades. You do take off the table. <laughs> both slow. immediately. Already gone, and Weibo going straight towards that TF. So Weibo already showing their hand. That, like, they're going to keep bringing this home to the side lane as long as possible. Let's see what Flandre's answer is going to be. That's just Weibo saying, let's see what you got. Let's see what you got. The Varus is locked in down. If that was Weibo, there's a little bit of flexibility there. Maybe with Flandre as well, some of his history too. The Jax is locked in though with some flexibility on both of the picks that JDG have gotten on the red side already. Yeah, now for Weibo. I mean, not really like easy answers into what JDG would think. Like you said, Jax, the flex pick and Vars can kind of slot in anywhere. I like them going towards the Callista. We have been seeing Light play the Lethality Callista. And I got to be honest, I don't really want Light on Lethality AD carries. Yeah. And this man's positioning in team fights has just been so immaculate when we see him on, you know, either crit or, or on hit. But they're going to go for this one. They just pick up the Renata right here and now. But seems like no. <laughs> he wants a redemption game, man. <laughs> <laughs> After the last time around and whipping a couple of those ulties early and having a rough game, uh, he wants another chance. But it is a pick that I feel like doesn't necessarily fit something of this place out of quick mobility out of mid lane, but it will have a present. Yeah, and right, it's surprising they went for it when the Talia was up. You got not going to get his hands on that, but maybe kind of a denial coming in from Weibo saying, hey, we don't want to give these here over to Yigao, now sets up JDG to have some decent sideline pressure. We know, pending on support matchup, maybe they can try and position themselves to be able to play strong around that bot side and let to play with numbers. Wonder in the second phase, okay, the Poppy is going to be banned, so taking away some of the setup. And I, I wonder uh, that Poppy ban, I guess, against the, uh, the Callista. I would have liked to see that, but I think in the second phase here for Weibo, you have to start looking uh, okay they're gonna go with some of the engage against missing so maybe taking away some of those long distance engage tools from jdg yeah i like taking away more of the engage uh from jdg it's gonna be hard to completely take them off it especially because i assume that we're gonna see Jax. i uh, just ended up slotted in the jungle it's been a lot more of a kanavi champion than it has been for jdg in the top side and now with the renata taken off the board Weibo probably going to have to lean into a bit of engage themselves. You know, things like Rakan, maybe even Alistar, depending on where JDG go with their support pick, definitely still being open. But a lot of support actually taking up the board in this thing. Yeah. It's actually and, crazy. And I, that's what I want to talk a little, a little bit about is the priority that Weibo put on the mid lane matchup when they still had a lot of options. They could have gone and grabbed that Renata already and not wait for it to get banned away. But they said maybe those mid lane bans in the second phase could really make the difference. So they wanted something consistent. I really, really like the targeted focus towards these supports here. Yeah, now the Zinja lock in makes a lot of sense. You are just going to end up sending Flandre up to top. Uh, going to be a lot about playing around just small windows to get in there with that counter strike and, and hopefully not get eaten alive on your way out. Now, with where Wave want to go. Banning out the Rakan themselves was kind of bold. I'm curious to see where they go because so far they've really... We, we've seen typical things, right? They were not of the Nico, but they haven't really branched out much more than that with the Callista. Oh. <laughs> we're actually getting the Annie coming through, Chris. Let's go. I love that. They have so much presence on the bot side now, and as soon as you get those stuns up, it's going to be so hard to even step up for JDG. This has also been a pick that Xiao Hao has hovered towards, but finding ways to get the fight started is what they need now, right? They have the yellow card, they have the in Tibbers drop, they have a lot of backup CC. They need something to get it kicked off, and there's the Sejuani. I think it's a bit awkward. I mean, you're playing Sejuani with, with literally no other melees on your team. It is Done full it before. Raid champions. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we see it happen. Doesn't, doesn't mean it's great, but again, not, not a whole lot left open that I think... Uh, Shao has shown to be comfortable on. Again, Maokai and Poppy, I think, really fitting the styles of what they played. Now, JDG having to round out their bot lane there. I would expect it to just be the rally up, get even more engaged, yeah. get even more dive to be there for the backlight. So this one's kind of interesting, right? Because JDG, a lot of, like, low-range melee brawlers up against Weibo, which is pretty much the complete opposite. Pulling them apart, cutting them back with the Azir, and really just trying to avoid 5v5s at all costs until potentially Xiaohu can take over later. Really love the difference in drafts that we have now. We do still see Weibo's echoes of the side lane pressure. One of the best to do it in the LPL here in JDG's first time on the Rift in the spring playoffs. 
We get Ruler on the Varus, a classic pick that he knows well, maybe on the bad end of it. But it's a very aggressive composition centered around Kanavi's proactivity here. Yeah, a lot's going to be up to him. I mean, him and Yigao, because your side lanes aren't going to have priority, right? They should get pushed in bot because of the enemy support. Yep, having range over the Jack's top. So a lot's going to be up to Kanavi and Yigao, I think, to get things going, relieve those other lanes, and start putting J2G in a position where they have an advantage. Weibo have heard those sweet, sweet silver scrapes two times now. It has gone two dominant games into two losing games and just stopping the reverse sweep in game five. Now they face a JDG who has looked dominant but ended up falling to third seed. And they want to prove that they are the real deal. They are both one step away from a second life in the LPL Spring Playoffs. But loser of this best of five, they will sink into the abyss until summer split. This is all on the line. Weibo playing their side lane pressure. JDG wanting to prove their dominance. We're getting ready for game number one. So let's hear those dios and let's give it up for JDG versus Weibo Gaming. We'll wake it up a little bit after it got started. I like it. I like it. Start hearing the echoes in the crowd as we get to a JDG looking for a little bit of level one vision action. I'm so interested in seeing how this game plays out with Chris being on the anti support. Chris has been weird because he's been branching out a little bit in terms of picks. Like we saw the Nico in the last series. Didn't look great on it. Uh, was really struggling got the to find job angles done. with the ult, but exactly. <laughs> But exactly, got the job done. Now going to come in on Annie. Maybe a similar story. Did take the airy in this lane, uh, knowing he's going to be able to get that prompt a lot playing into a melee support like missing. We see yeah. Ruler, of course, going the lethality route. I'm not going to misspeak on that one like I did at 8 a.m. the other day. <laughs> uh, it's fine. It's I mean, fine. It kind of makes sense, right? I mean, so much threat coming out from the Tibbers, from Fliskal throwing it in. You've already pointed out the Sejuani. TF ult porting yeah. behind you. Ruler is going to have to keep a good bit of space. Uh, to be able to survive as this game goes on. I, I don't want to bring up bad memories, but there's an Azir on the other side. I, I don't know what that means, but we'll see if it makes any sense as it goes on. Ruler maybe looking for some redemption play, but uh, this is the fourth game of Annie and Crisp's long career, uh, at least competitively, rather. And uh, I'm very, very interested if he can be the difference maker, if he can get on the roams with Xiao Hao, because that has also been where Crisp has been at his best, is when he roams. Yeah, it's it's. I mean, it's even just throwing back right to, to his glory days with FPX, where, yep. where his movement around the map was really something people would highlight. Uh, Wavo overall, no, it's not really about the two v two. Hell, Wavo overall don't really play for any of their lanes to, to hard win. Usually, sure, it's about the prio it can give them because. Uh, I, I think I heard Kelsey say a great thing that without numbers advantage, Wavo are terrified. Wavo can ten k gold up without numbers advantage, they are nothing. But Ooh. Ooh. Start that, that ZDZ should early. know this. They, uh, they might actually know that they were pathing across side, but they don't actually. And now ZDZ getting engaged on Flandre wants the angle, but not going to go for it. The back immediately started by Kanavi to get quick back as Xiao Hao comes up. Kanavi's going to stop his back. I think they might actually be able to take this fight. Kanavi goes in on ZDZ. Xiao Hao shows his face, blocks off the engage on a ZDZ. Yellow card is coming up now as well, but engage from Flandre. He wants it, but he's not going to flash for it. He had that flash counter strike, but didn't want to pull the trigger on it. Health bars are working out for JDG. And this is a 2v2 tussle. Flandre goes for it. Xiao Hao's now the engage target here. He's oh. under tower. Flashes of plenty, bloody lips, but no deaths. Yeah, my God, tense on both sides. Is he, is he having to play that on a knife's edge because of how long Flagre was holding the, the Counter-Strike and, and the Leap? So, uh, ends up working out in favor for JDG. They can fend them off. Summoner's blown everywhere, but at least if Flagre is going to be able to push this lane in, and ZDZ, of course, doesn't have Teleport to get back to lane. Kanavi finally going to complete his back. Does have a little bit of vision there in the enemy jungle as well. We'll take a look back at that scrap. Yeah, we're going to see exactly how it went down because Weibo wanted to go for the counter gank uh, after seeing JDG go for a top side. But I feel like a big thing here was the fact that, again, Flandre was holding on to that, that counter strike in the jump for so long that ZDZ had to be a little bit cautious. Ends up pulling the red cards, so he can't do much. And then 
it really feels like Wave would just overstep, right? Jax, uh, Zinja not having like the like super long cooldowns early on, they're gonna be able to get right back on you, and they end up paying for it with those flashes. Xiaohu is in a lot of trouble in mid lane too, just trying to trade his health bar for some of these minions. We'll have Xiao Hao right behind him. I also, I want to point out that he actually ended up going for Grass, mm -hmm. which, you know, we were seeing a bit of earlier in the split, but it, it fell off pretty quickly. He did end up going for it here once again, so I wouldn't be surprised if he doesn't. Oh, oh wait, the wait. shield! Oh my god, Yagao wants it. He has Flash, he doesn't decide to pull it. And that's Xiao Hu who's going to have to burn his TP to get back. Yeah, maybe, maybe we're going to take this one instead of something like the Fleet Footwork. Uh, to be uh, having an easier time to sustain up, but nice coming out from Yigao. I mean, just like the last series, right? When when Scout was getting the better of Shahu, Yigao now able to do it in this first game. We are getting level six for Yigao as well already. He is going to back, doesn't have TP to get back. We have objectives coming up here. There's a huge wave crashing on a Flandre in the top side of the map. Ah, no! Observer, why you got to do that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is kind of big, though, to lose that cannon. And now we actually see Xiao Hao just taking the advantage up here and taking these telegrubbies. I shouldn't be able to get too many. Uh, Weibo have even shown throughout playoffs so far that they really don't care that, about getting any more than yeah. you know one or two. That's kind of about it for Weibo. They're never really the team hard forcing to be able to get a lot of those drugs and, and be able to push their advantage. So Kanavi, I think it's a good call. Him trying to do this now, prevent any of the power being able to come out from Weibo. And now with sixes is when things like Yigao's Tilly is really going to have to come online. There will be no Grubageddon today, at least yet. Uh, we are actually wanting to see a little bit of that roaming from the supports. Missing on that roam already. I'm going to go give a nice little visit to Xiaohu. Kanavi was also roaming around. And you can see this priority for JDG and where it's playing towards. It is all centered around mid lane right now. Even with some of that bot lane CS starting to get out in front for light. Yeah, move over to mid first, help Yigao get a safe window to roam, and then we can see here, right, JDG hoping to make the play on top side. He doesn't have level six. Weaver's wall going to be taught. ZDZ realizes he's in a lot of trouble, and he's getting a little bit of his own medicine thrown his way. They find him under turret, but he is able to kite his way to victory there. He has a big old wave coming, and Flandre is here to collapse. Doesn't get the counter-strike off there. They don't really have CC, but they do have the damage. They'll be able to take out to the top side. They will be able to get first blood and even some bricks. Yeah, they commit a lot. We can see in mid, it looks like Shahu, yep, getting at least one plate for that, even close to getting two, but nice by JDG. They know ZDZ's uh, flash was down from earlier, and they're trying to set Flandre up to be that big side lane threat, so ZDZ won't have a chance of being able to win in the 1v1 and, and push that advantage forward with the TF like you'd hope. And that's some of the strategy we wanted to see from JDG. You have a lot of tape on Weibo. We know that they're a side lane pressure. And if you can get those side lanes under wraps early, it becomes that much more difficult for them to execute. So really, really nice game plan so far from JDG. Yeah, I mean, look, he's actually being down in CS in the matchup. Two plates going over to Flandre. So getting, getting his hands on some early Merc treads. Now it's about if Wave are going to look for an early Drake, right? You have Kalista. And like any time you have Kalista, it's about getting those Drakes stacked up. Feeling a little bit more confident in the trades. Ooh, Chains of Corruption there as well. That's a huge level difference. Oh my goodness. As Crips is going to go back, he has no health, but still the Fates Call used and Light able to press them off of him. So he will save his support. Yeah, JDG. Walking back afraid of what was to come, especially with Xiao Hao showing in River. I believe he was clearing out a ward. So it ends up being all right for both sides, but my God, did I thought think Chris was going to go down when his health bar went to, yeah. what, like like 10 HP? Yeah, it literally looked like it was nothing. <laughs> and then when he comes out, he had like 120 or something like that. But uh, that that's some of the equalization that Ruler and Missing can have now that we haven't seen a lot of presence and pressure down towards the light. Callista definitely wants some resources early, and they haven't been able to facilitate that whatsoever. No, we've seen Weibo... <laughs> this looking more reminiscent to, to like regular season Weibo, right? Of a very tempered early game. Shao is just kind of kind of farm and do his own thing. They don't play much, I think, around the windows of lane pile that they get, but should be fine. It seems like they're banking a lot on the Azir being able to have a sizable impact. That's where I want to bring up some of the gauntlet conversation about our playoffs. Is this is a lot? for Weibo like you, you've gone the heart-wrenching distance two times in two best of fives that were to decide if you still get to play the video game 
And uh, you're going into yet another one, an even tougher opponent. I wonder if momentum will actually reign king. Chris going to get a double CC. Shao Hao is here as well. I don't know if they can back that one up, but they do get Crisp out of there again, finding himself in some trouble a couple times now. Yeah, Shao with the counter cake is able to keep Weibo alive, but Chris did have to use a flash, so overall, uh, JDT doing a nice job of finding a bit of an advantage right now, not having to worry about that flash tibbers that could potentially come later on. Sure, you still have to worry about the Fates call, right? But I feel like, uh, like hypothetically, you'd love to use that to just be able to pull the Annie back in. Yeah. She was under any threat, but JDG gonna convert this Ooh. into a dragon. Weibo, what a contestant, but they might have just gotten used a little bit. Missing, wanted to crash over the wall, but the dragon does end up just going over. So pretty decent objective control so far from JDG. Oh, they don't know. Missing on the side. Wavo, you got to be careful. Fate's call is not available. Tibbers is. You do have that ability to get the big CC stun. TP coming in now. That will be Flandre joining the tussle. They're going to join a party, and JDG are looking for blood. Change the corruption goes on the light. They know they can't do it, and that's a double going over to JDG. It feels like they're getting to the root of Weibo early in this game one. Yeah, great kills going over to JDG side. I'm surprised they committed Flandre's TP down if they weren't going to swap their bot lane up the top side, but it seems like just wanting to maybe get a bit more CS under Ruler's Mount to get him close. To that first item and now for jdg you picked up kills bot you picked up drake can even just start making a turn up towards that top side is we're gonna see here i mean you said it right uh, not not expecting missing to go for this angle and of course they see him but now really having nowhere to go to back off and again i think logic coming is a bit overkill but they want to get the job done yeah and again with this combo you know they want to play together so what they do is they just try to split them up in the difference and uh Unfortunately, they're able to get down into the further part of it and take down light. Now, the, the biggest conversation now becomes Ruler has an advantage. And he might be going lethality, but he ain't no slouch. And I, I think Kanavi has taken a lot of spotlight this year. But you have to remember, Ruler had one of his best years, it felt like, last year in the LPL in his first year here. Yeah, I mean, again, Ruler and Missing are still, you know, an incredibly good bot lane. One of the best spot lanes in the LPL, right? It's just not them taking over as they were last year. And even that was a lot of the rest of JDG facilitating them, the mm -hmm. meta being about uh, playing that way. So definitely nothing to knock. And now, like you said, 2-0 and up, has the Ghost Blade already done. It's going to start being a lot of threat on the Weibo in these early objective fights. And again, with the, the, uh, the Krugs, not Krugs, Gr Grubbies? Grubbies, there we go. The I, I, don't know why, I don't know why that was the word that slipped my mind when I said it three minutes ago. With the Grubs <laughs> being up, easy for JDG. Yeah, I, I will say Weibo did sneak in and get one of those on the second spawn. It still will be four, at least, for JDG, but they will not get the mites. So there was a bit of a denial there from Weibo and some good moves from Xiao Hao, who also will be on his first item, uh, joining Xiao Hu with his Leandri's first on the grass build of the Azir. But something else I, I think that has to start becoming a question is we're going to get another dragon. Light's going to have to have an influence in some of these fights. And how does he move around this JDG team fight cop? Like, it feels impossible. It does feel impossible, right? You're going to have, like, Unraveled Earth being placed down. <laughs> yeah. A counter-striking Jax behind you. Rel jumping in with her ult. There's, there's so many things Light's going to have to worry about. Uh, and, yeah, we're just going to have to see him be able to get it done. But then also, Chris, Shahu, Shahu, everyone healing for him is CDZ. I don't do much threat. Xiaohu gonna get pretty chunky. He's starting to get pretty healthy though. As he does. There is a roaming missing coming in as Ruler will be assigned to this mid lane. We're actually gonna get a bit of a lane swap a Rooney here. There is a Rift Herald coming up in 50 seconds. That dragon's still about a minute and 35 off here. So I wonder if JDG wanna put more prior on pushing the tempo on these neutral objectives. Yeah, and I definitely think they should with uh, the advantage that they have when they're playing around the Varus right now. He's absolutely massive. And you can see JDG trying to angle for Shaohu. A little bit of an awkward angle from Shaohu, and now he's going to get locked out the CC chain, but he has the Emperor's Divide. Still, though, now going to have to go for the, the reset. Not really able to stay around lane. Could potentially be dope if he does. Wait, oh, go. yeah. All right, he's not going to go the full distance there, but uh, it does end up making it at least pressured. It looks like him. it looks like he used it. He's like, okay, you know, maybe he's being a bit greedy and not <laughs> walking all the way back. Uh, and, you know, if we use his cooldown right now, not the end of the world. 
Those plates do fall. They will get the crash on bottom side and use those four grubs to help in that push a little bit. Looks like it should be answered in time. Okay, they're just going to TP Xiaohu down here. They're bringing Xiao Hao and Chris. As Dragon's going to be spawning in about 30 seconds. Oh, they do see him there. But just look. Look at the vision control for Chitty on bot side. They are, they are absolutely stacked. With knowing anywhere that Weibo can show up, Dragon up in 15. I wonder if Weibo's just going to end up opting out, looking to, to not play for it. Again, they have Kalista, so it feels like they really should. Yeah. But maybe feeling a bit of the pressure that JDG have been putting up so far on the map. And it's uh, going back to the things we said about, you know, Xiaohao getting pressured in his jungle. It's a little bit later than I'd say the, those pressures we saw in the past two series, but... Kanavi has consistently been either forcing Xiaohao to respond to his ganks or just pressuring Xiaohao himself, not only on the map with these objectives, but in his jungle as well. We see a second dragon going to JDG. So we do opt out of contesting, so it does mean they should be able to get this Rift Herald. They're already making their way up here now. Now it's going to be about seeing both Flandre and Xiaohu back off a little bit so they don't end up getting dove on either side. Oh, Xiaohu. Missing is right over the wall. He's gonna be able to join up on it. It looks like uh, Weibo were not confident to do the Rift Herald. They were trying to go mid lane and catch out Ruler, but a side lane turret will go down, and that's first turret of the game. Yeah, it's, they're still angling for the dive, but no time now with Missing already moving over. So Weibo have been able Kanabi's to find it. on anything. this side of the map now. Looks like they're gonna look for a gank on the Flandre. No, actually, looking, just gonna clear up the control ward. Looking, looking, looking. All you can do is window shop right now. JDG with an 86% first turret percentage here will take their first one and are off to a strong start. 3,000 gold in the lead off of just a few kills and a lot of CS differential in the jungle as well. Yeah, I feel like we've been seeing JDG play well. Like you said, Kanavi's been keeping up the tempo. They've been playing aggressive. But I also feel like the last two minutes is an example of when Weibo just don't do anything on the map. Yep. It's like, all right, they're, they're pushing bot, they're taking dragon. We're not going for Herald. We're not maybe establishing vision control top first and looking for a play on Flandre and then leaning down. There was a lot of things because they could have done there to at least find something. But JDG now 3k gold lead have all the drakes. Yeah. Really feels like this is just so much in JDG's favor. And that's why I was so curious that the Kalista pick, not that alone, but also not grabbing the Renata, going for the Azir. It just felt like there was a little bit of misdirection going on in the draft for Weibo. And they have to try to find a way to pull it together because Light is going to have, a, as we said earlier, a really tough time entering these fights. And it's, a lot of that sustained damage is going to be on ZDZ and Xiaohu now. Yeah, and we can see ZDZ and Miyagao both making their way down. Okay, they're going to start backing off. So, sadly, not going to get the commit to the fight. Like, it looks like both teams were, were promising us. Uh, but, yeah, it's even hard just considering, again, the early pressure that ZDZ faced. And Flandre being up in CS, M being strong. And ZDZ not, even if he does eventually get a turret, right? He can't safely walk forward in lane. Look at this. Oh, my God. <laughs> he, can, he, he shouldn't really be able to win against either of them. Yo, right I, now. like... It's honestly impressive. JDG's strategy, I have to keep going back to that. They have found a way to uproot the system of Weibo. Now Weibo may be looking to uproot Flandre in the side lane. He is a Jax. Ooh, gets the flash out. Delivery to Xiaohao, and they'll clean him up easy. Xiaohu finally gets one on the board for Weibo, but they do lose their outer tower topside. Yeah, so it's going to be one kill against one turret you you assume Weibo should be able to get the spot lane turret so the turrets will be equalized but at the same time jdg are getting ripped here yeah so i think jdg going to be feeling really happy about this one they're going to be able to drop that mid make that one down they're going to be able to use it to, to just get themselves in a better position for picking up that third drake they'll be on slow point around 20 minutes it's we're really going to start seeing Weibo, i think be more active especially with uh the destiny maybe finding some more picks using some of the things that we've seen them be strong with in their past. Now, they know that Xiaohu does not have flash. If that wind becomes lightning connects, he might be just dead. Yeah. As uh, we go back to the replay here. Flandre just living his best life. Again, has an advantage, feels comfortable pushing the, the wave out, but look at the mini map uh, with the vision. We don't really see any member of Weibo other than light. So Weibo doing a nice job of taking advantage of Flandre's hubris. Just a really nice one-two combo to be able to take him down. These are the kind of combos we got to see from Weibo. And uh, I think back to the point of the 
system that JDG has approached this one with. They attacked ZDZ early. They were getting lane advantages. They were getting Yagao out of mid lane uh, against Xiaohu, who is usually the one that does that. And they were able to get that two kill bot side, which uh, I think really helped them move their pressure around the rest of the map. Now we have a dragon in about 50 seconds. That would be soul point for JDG. Oh, I'm sorry. Dude, our observers are out for blood today. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I gotta say though, like this does harken back to again. I feel like JDG are just one of those teams that is incredibly consistent in many different areas. Uh, they haven't been making mistakes with Weibo to exploit, and hell, with with the tempered pace they've had, they've actually been doing a great job of taking advantage of Weibo's mistakes. Yeah. Weibo gonna find a bit of relief in answering this mid lane turret with what ZDZ just picked up in bot side. But again, I, I feel like the the most stark contrast right now is just the amount of map control. That JDG yeah. have been able to keep up, like still, just the amount of vision they have around this dragon is insane. And it looks like Weibo, once again, not even going to opt into fighting this one, giving JDG a free soul point. Each tier of the LPL playoffs, each round is just like a whole nother power arc in any anime that you've ever watched, right? It is actually insane the level up that you have to have every single game, and they're only a couple days apart. And I think JDG are showing that they've been able to study their opponent. They've been able to craft a strategy here to really take down Weibo. And at least the early strength right now, they're showing that all that time, all that preparation, that third seed was there for a reason. They want that GA. And if they can keep this up, it'll be huge. A lot of people are questioning why Flandre was coming back in after Sheer showing so much promise. Uh, in the, I believe it was six series he played. Uh, and hell, if JDG can, can have smooth sailing like this, a lot of those questions are going to be answered. <laughs> this is the case. Weaver's wall well going to be used on mid lane. ZDZ not caught out yet. The rest of Weaver will be caught out. Kadavi goes a little bit ham. Going to have to pop his Crescent Guard there. So a couple ultimates used by JDG getting a little flustered. Yeah, so three ults being used by JDG, two ults being used by Weibo, and then also the heal on top of that. So pretty even trade. But at the same time, if you're JDG, you're just like, hey, we're chilling for the next four minutes anyway. Like, sure, we can use things like the Weaver's Wall to look for picks. We're able to get Pryo and Science right now and try and collapse. But if they can't find anything, it's not the end of the world. Weibo's going to have to fight them soon. They have second item spikes coming across now as well. Frozen Heart is there for Kanavi. We also have a little bit of strength at least coming through very soon for Xiaohu and Yigao. Uh, I think that'll be super important, especially now that Yigao has his Leandris completed. But I also want to harken back to what I feel like has been the powerhouse of this uh, game so far, at least. And that is Kanavi. Uh, I, I would say at this point, the pillar of JDG. Uh, they have continuously molded rosters around this guy. And I think uh, in a year of renaissance for him, it feels right. Yeah, I mean, right, this this has been the time to set up and put in play around Kanavi. He's been absolutely delivering. I love it. The aggression still keeping up. They're so playing around him all right. Blue. Yeah, <laughs> but they being in Weibo's face, being so aggressive, and especially when, when Baron's up right now, not going to leave it up the chance of Weibo going for any shenanigans. Weibo have been a team in the past who have gone for the sneaky Baron sneak. Uh, sneaky, sneaky... I, I, I don't got anything to add. The sneaky bear. The sneaky bear. I, I was going to go with something that maybe rhymed a little bit better, but now it's JDG that don't do it sneakily. They're just going to do it. Uh, I guess it's not envisioned right now. They do realize something could be amiss. Already about halfway down is the Baron Shaohao. Or guiding his boar over. Destiny does get popped. ZDZ on the flank here. Ruler already about half health. The engage comes through from JDG now as well, though. Light getting engaged on by missing. Chains of Corruption not going to hit the cleanse as big. Oh. who's doing some serious work here. They've already gotten Ruler down. Weibo has some fight left to give. Oh, no. They get Xiaohu. He's going to go. Is he? No. He's not down. He finally falls. Xiaohu goes down to Flandre. Crisp is stuck between a rock and a rock. And he's just dead. JDG. They end up scrapping right back. Now they're back onto the Baron. Yeah, J oh, wait. CDC. He Bye, denies Chico. them. And they find Xiao Hao, though. That would be a pretty nice kill to have. Then they could even potentially maybe even turn back around. He could. Xiao Hao tried his best. He is a tanky boar, but he will be carved up just the same. Missing's the one that claims that one.
Yeah, so they do get it. They actually can't turn back around. They don't have their AD carry. They don't have their mid laner. Death timer is incredibly low, but a huge swing for JDG. Great fight. It looked like it was promising with how much Crisp and uh, Shao invested in getting on top of Ruler, but JDG's frontline is being more menacing right there. Missing it's right on top of Light. The guy was dishing out the damage on him. Sure, it's traded out on the opposite side for Ruler. But it really just doesn't feel like without the Kalista, uh, and especially with Shao who's so exposed after going in, yeah. like like how are they going to be able to deal damage, especially with the Bruisers and Jaxes in general? The biggest thing is there was a lot of discommunication, miscommunication, and dysfunction within that because Shao uh, Shao Hu was pushing away from Chris, where Chris was trying to get a big old engage. Now we go back to it because JDG know they can just force the fight. The Baron is going to go to Kanavi. He has that Crescent Guard to deny any damage from Weibo, and they know that they have so much control of the map, they can just dictate the tempo. Weibo have uh, been brought into uncharted territories. Hell, we've been brought to uncharted territories. Like, uh, Weibo have been having, pr especially pretty solid game ones, right? Game ones and game twos, and where they've been winning out and been pretty dominant, but JDG flipping the script on his head, saying, hey, we don't care if he 2 would us like three weeks ago. They're looking good with the time to prepare that they've had. And with this roster, like, they were the expected second seed, right? Like, they, it, it, it was a, a last minute very strong push from TS that got them to third seed there. JDG tried to do all the work they could and now they are here against the surging Weibo to try to stop the advance. And Weibo themselves a couple seconds away from a dragon spawning with very heavy presence from mid lane. He might be able to deny this soul. Again Weibo showing some of their strengths, some of the things that we know. Again like how to play the map, yeah. how to try and pull the enemy away from what they're going for, but it just feels like it's probably too late at this point. Yeah, how he's gonna, he's gonna hope to steal it. Yo, he wants the 50 50. Oh no, CDZ. Oh, what happened, bro? He's gone. Shao Hao. He wants it. He's in the pit. Shao Hao oh, gets, gets it. it. He denies the soul and gets out of dodge. What a play. I got to be honest. I know we then panned back to top. I could not care about top lane in that situation. It was all about whether the steal could happen. So they do get themselves that, you know, buy themselves a bit of a reprieve, but JDG still. Why did JDG strong. let this happen? <laughs> Question? <laughs> not expecting for Shao Hao to be waiting over there and just great smite for the Sejuani. JDG may be a little angry after that one. They just have Baron buff for about a minute. They're getting side lane pressure as well in the top side, getting a TP out of Xiao Hu as well, but the pressure is on in mid lane as a tier two is just gonna fall. They are breaking the base one by one. Almost all of the towers outside of the base are gone. And that's why even if Labo found a bit of a reprieve and, you know, they're they're finding some uh, turrets and sides, it doesn't really feel like it matters. JDG doing a great job now of corralling them down towards the spot lane. They've Baron for another 40 seconds. So they're going to be able to finish off this last outer turret. And then the question is, do they push any further? Do they maybe just back and, and try and get Tempo to come back out onto the map? See what they end up opting for. It's crazy that a uh, JDG that seemed so dominant last year already uh, coming in with some different pieces this year, some re-editions it feels like, but also just a, a different feel to them where it, it has been not, I would say, the star-spangled, uh, at least, journey that they would want in a spring. They've had some trials, some, some rough times, but as a whole, it's been really cool to see them kind of collapse around Kanabi. It feel I mean it just feels, you know, like a less less polished twenty twenty two JDG, right? Like like the way they play is very similar with Yigao coming back on the roster. It feels a bit more controlled, feels a lot more about how they play through the five V fives. Uh not just about, you know, muscling the early game, winning lane like all, all these different things, right? So I think it feels comfortable, but it definitely doesn't look like J to G have completely found their footing. Makes mm -hmm. sense also you're bringing Flandre back in on the roster when he has been playing the last two series, even with Shea, right? A young, new rookie player coming in. It feels like J to G are going to take time to get up to their true 100%. And that's the craziest part, man. That's the absolute craziest part. But we also have to remember that their lives are on the line with this series. So starting off with a 1-0, upending uh, maybe a little bit of the track record of Weibo where they have gone strong for two games in the early parts of their series already. And trying to upset fate. 
in their own way. Now, they are putting some more siege down. All the turrets outside of the base had been taken out in the end by JDG. ZDZ is on the other side of the map, trying to get some tier two action. Yeah, he's just trying to get get some more gold, get those objective bounties, and help Weibo find a way back into the game. Luckily for Weibo, I mean, there's no neutral objectives, up, right? We're, we're waiting two minutes for Dragon, a minute 34 Baron, so they can keep turtling in their base as long as they don't walk into their own jungle. When uh, when those pushes are coming through, they should be fine, and you can see they've been yeah. holding on for the past two minutes thanks to that. We have three items now as well for majority members on Weibo's side, actually, so maybe a little bit of strength given over to Light Xiaohu, ZDZ a little bit more as well. Some tankier stats coming in for JDG as well as uh, they were able to complete the Spirit Passage for Kanavi. And get third item for Ruler as well on the Lethality Varus. Yeah, I feel like they're going to have to play fights differently than they did last time. I understand Xiaohu flying in and trying to find the angle on the Ruler, because again, playing Lethality, he's playing far back. But it kind of feels like he actually has to be one of the people right next to Light and like utilizing the Emperor's Divide to, to try to help make sure he could deal damage. And maybe relying more on like ZDZ and Chris uh, being the ones to be able to get right onto Ruler. But I don't know. Then it's like, do you have, do you have the damage to take out Ruler in a situation like that? Yeah. And then Light's vulnerable. Shahu's in another precarious position like he was last time. So I think a lot of questions to be seen with, with how Weibo can approach this next fight. I will give them credit, though. If they had given over the soul, we'd be in a much different position uh, here as five minutes have gone down. And I think sure. them being able to delay, them being able to get another item spike, another item and a half, really, for Shaohu, it is important. And they have about 35 seconds or so, a little bit more than that, to set this one up for themselves, deny yet another one, and see Shaohu come up clutch against Kanavi. Again, Weibo's one of those teams that, like, if you look at their gold difference from, like, 10 to 20 minutes goes down... At, and then like 20 to 30 minutes is, is it's post crazy. 30s is when it starts going back up so these are really the moments where Weibo thrives but again I think JD have looked incredibly on point missing oh being part of 78 kills oh. trying to make sure they don't get anywhere near this Baron well this is bold I like it TP is available for Flandre Destiny for ZDZ Kanavi is end up pulling off the Baron just trying to get Weibo's pressure towards here they're really trying to get ZDZ to pull the trigger on the Destiny <laughs> Weibo actually now threatening the Baron themselves. They it's can't okay. get caught though. They can't get caught. Here comes Yagao. That's a big Emperor's Divide, but it did not separate enough. Chains of Corruption is going to connect on multiple members. Destiny from the side. ZDZ, he has his eyes on Kanavi. Kanavi's getting low. Meanwhile, on the other side, Xiao, who's getting taken out. Flandre, he's going for it. Nice flash from Chris. Really big. Weibo still have some fight here too, as Light needs to find an angle. Xiao Hao will be the front line right now. Andre and the rest of JDG, they have a good angle to deny Weibo back to their base. Dragon is still up on the table. Weibo need to fight their way out of this one. They're going to get a TP in from Yagao. He has flash. They got to fight beforehand, but they realize they can't. Show how trying to get out of this with ZDZ flashing. Big seismic <laughs> shove, and Yagao makes the difference. Crisp is just a little itty. It will be run down by the real weapon of JDG and Flandre. Great team fight coming out from JDG. They're not even looking to go towards that dragon. Looks like they're hoping they could just end this game. Wow, what a way. In 10 seconds. It's close. Now, Xiao Hao, he could dodge anything, and that is it. You go clean in the house. That's a full okay. on ace for JDG, and they'll take a mid lane in him. Yeah, I, okay, so they ended up sending Flandre to Dragon. Uh, they initially started to bring him down towards that bot lane to help kill Xiao Hao, but I love this. Take what you can on the map, get the inhibitor, get the Drake back off, and I wonder if they'll even just pivot straight towards the Baron. We have Kanavi clearing out the vision right now. They were willing to just two-man it earlier, so I'm sure they're fine with this. This was so close for so long, and JDG I, I just like seemed to hold it. I mean, the big thing here is the fact that Light doesn't get jumped on because the Jackson here, which is like one of the big threats, uh, being put onto Weibo. So Weibo were able to find a kill onto Kanavi, but Xiao Hu, again, to find some of these Emperor's Divides is putting himself in awkward situations that allows for JDG to find really easy turns. And once Flandre gets involved, it really feels like it sealed the deal for uh, the fight being in JDG's favor. Damage has been done. Almost a 10,000 gold lead for JDG. They take the Baron. They'll have all the siege potential they could ever ask for, and they just need to catch one more big fight to end the game. And, right? I mean, it feels so hard now for Weibo. Even, even a mistake it might not spell the end for JDG. And we can see things like Zanius being picked up now for Falandre. Be able to survive a bit longer, get another rotation of spells out to be able to survive if any skirmishes do come through. 
But now with this Baron, they're going to be able to do so much from the map. Weaver's Wall is, is back up as well, so you can have Yig out in either mid or bot and then able to join up with the rest of the four-man core. Uh, just a lot of different options available for JDG. You take your pick. You have your cake and eat it too, if you want. Uh, that is the best thing to do. To have your cake and eat it too? Of course. What kind it of cake? Looks what kind of cake is JDG eating right now? You know, Whatever not it is, it looks real good. No, I was going to say, they're not eating any cake yet. This is just game one. You don't break out the cake until after winning two games. And then that's when <laughs> you could get a bit overconfident. And then that's how we could end up getting a five-game series. And like, that's how Weibo do it. I see, I see. You're just believing. You're uh, manifesting. Andre, oh, he's manifesting his way onto the back line. He's all by himself, but it doesn't matter because he's able to take it down, use that Zanyas he completed. Chains of Corruption goes a little bit wide. A lot of damage there onto Weibo's back line, though. They are on to the Nexus turrets here. Yagao just peppering those rocks on the other side. Eventually, they will pile on to a boulder here. JDG with the first Nexus turret gone. Weaver's Wall coming across, too, to block everybody off. Now they just need to get this Nexus turret down. Weibo have been left wanting in game number one as JDG, the Titan, has awakened. We are in uncharted territories. Weibo losing game one of their series. JDG coming in looking strong. No one questioning the Flandre uh, kind of ring up. At least in this game one, it worked out really well. They set yeah. topside behind early, and yeah, JDG looked great. It was so ridiculously clear that JDG are so prepped for Weibo. Like at every turn, they knew where they were gonna be. They had strategies to deal with their side lane. They had strategies to deal with the way they pulled the macro off because they had such a lead that Weibo couldn't do what they wanted to do. And that is where we've seen Weibo falter. Again, you said they have not lost a first game in the series so far. And now we'll see if they can bounce back for game number two. JDG look dominant. We'll come back after a short break.